Hello and welcome. My name's Philip, and today I'm going to try and answer a question. It's widely accepted that the Norman period of English history begins on the 25th of December 1066, with the coronation of William the Conqueror. When the Norman period ends, however, is a question with no definite answer. See, it's quite rare to have precise start and end dates for a historical period. Often, you'll find eras overlapping one another. So what we really need to find out is what defines an age. And in this case, what makes the Norman period Norman? One way of defining the Norman period might be saying it was when England was ruled by the Royal House of Normandy, which includes William the Conqueror and two of his sons, William Rufus and Henry Beauclerk. That sounds relatively straightforward, and by that reasoning, the Norman period ends on the 1st of December 1135. That is the date when Henry passed away whilst on campaign in the south of Normandy. According to contemporary chronicler Henry of Huntingdon, this was due to eating a surfeit of lampreys. Henry's body was taken to Rouen, where it was embalmed. His entrails were buried locally, and his preserved remains taken back to England to be interred at Reading Abbey. Thus endeth the Normans. But is it the end? Henry Beauclerk had no male heirs, after his son William Adlin tragically died during the White Ship Disaster in 1120. This event, ominously referred to by contemporaries as simply the shipwreck, saw the deaths of approximately 250 men and women when the royal ship struck a submerged rock off the coast of Barfleur, Normandy, and sank into the English Channel. In the wake of this tragedy, King Henry had named his daughter Matilda as his successor. But when Henry himself died, the crown was seized by Henry's nephew, Stephen of Blois, before Matilda could claim it. This begins the short-lived royal house of Blois. It consists of Stephen, and sometimes Stephen's son Eustace, although he never actually ruled. Moreover, Stephen is sometimes actually included in the House of Normandy. You see, Stephen's claim to the English throne was that he was the grandson of William the Conqueror. His mother, Adela, was Henry Beauclerc's closest sister. Stephen himself had been a member of Henry's court since at least 1112, when he was knighted by King Henry. Stephen joined Henry on campaigns to subdue rebellions in Normandy. He was, for all intents and purposes, a Norman king. So then, after Stephen dies on the 25th of October 1154, the Norman period ends, you may say. The next royal house is the House of Anjou, and Anjou is not Normandy. Well, yes and no. You see, when Stephen claimed the throne, his cousin Matilda was not especially pleased. She had a lot of English barons supporting her claim as well, and so began a period of civil war known nowadays as the Anarchy, although at the time often called the Cousins' War. The war lasted nearly 19 years, and the Peterborough Chronicle claims that men said openly that Christ and his saints were asleep. It was a bad time, is what I'm saying. It effectively ended with the signing of the Treaty of Winchester in 1153. This is where Stephen disinherited his son Eustace, and named Matilda's son, Henry Kurtmantle, as his new heir. When he ascended the throne, in December 1154, Henry Kurtmantle, now King Henry II, brought with him his father's lands as Count of Anjou. That's why he and his sons get called the House of Anjou or the Angevins. 
but Henry was still effectively a Norman. He could trace his lineage fairly directly to William the Conqueror. He famously held a Christmas court with his sons Richard the Lionheart and John Lackland in the Chateau de Caen, William the Conqueror's castle. He spoke Norman French as a first language, as did his sons. Speaking of his sons, let's talk about John. John is not well liked by history, and I don't really want to get into the many, many reasons why, but safe to say he made a lot of poor decisions during his rule. John wasn't really the first choice to rule the Angevin territories, which stretched from England all along the north and west coast of France and down to the Pyrenees. In fact, Richard the Lionheart had named his infant nephew, Arthur of Brittany, as his heir, but John took the throne anyway. The King of France, Philip Augustus, used John's seizure of the throne as an excuse to reclaim his territories. He started stirring up rebellions and leading military campaigns against John's allies. One by one, John lost the continental provinces, earning him his sobriquet, Lackland. In August 1204, after a failed defensive campaign, John lost Normandy. That seems to be the final nail in the coffin then, surely? Without being in charge of Normandy, how can it be the Norman period? Well, just because they weren't in control of Normandy anymore, didn't mean they stopped being culturally Norman. Nor did John give up his claims to the duchy. In 1214, he launched an invasion to recapture his ancestral home. It went well at first, but things quickly fell apart. After losing the Battle of Bonvin in July, John made a peace agreement with Philip, returned the land he had captured, and paid the French king compensation for the war. Then he returned to England with his tail between his legs in October. The cause was taken up again by John's son, Henry of Winchester, who, despite everything, still considered himself a Norman king. When he announced his intentions to invade, he used phrases like reclaiming his inheritance, restoring his rights, and defending his legal claims. In 1228, barons in Normandy and Anjou rebelled against the French throne, and they called upon Henry to reclaim his homeland. However, it wasn't until two years later that Henry actually managed to muster an invasion force. Trying to avoid pitched battles with the French army, Henry marched south to Poitou, before making for the safety of Gascony, the only continental territory still held by the English throne. The campaign achieved nothing, and Henry made a truce with the French before sailing back to England later that same year. After several decades of civil unrest in England, Henry finally signed the Treaty of Paris in 1259. The treaty did three things. One, it stopped the French from supporting English rebels. Two, it recognised Henry as the legal ruler of Gascony. And three, it returned all other continental properties to the French throne. Properties including Normandy. Nobility on both sides of the channel had to make a decision. From this point on, were they English or Norman? By 1260 then, you can say pretty confidently that the Norman period had ended. But the Anglo-Norman connection didn't just vanish overnight. Norman French was still the first language of every English king until Henry IV. His son, Henry V, was the first king to write in English. Norman French was the language of the law, with courts using three languages, 
Latin for writing, French for speaking formally, and English for informal exchanges between parties. Juries were all expected to understand Norman French. And although Norman French did fall out of usage in the late 15th century, a variation known as Law French was still used in an official capacity until 1731. There are some specific phrases still used in British Parliament today that are Norman French. The motto of the royal family, Dieu et mon droit, is Norman French, first coined by Richard the Lionheart. And speaking of the royal family, their heraldry still features the three golden lions on a red field. This heraldry again can be traced back to Richard the Lionheart. One lion each for England, the Aquitaine, and Normandy. So when did the Norman period end? Well, technically England is still ruled by descendants of William the Conqueror. But the thing that really defines the Normans, both as a people and a period, is their sense of cultural identity. Normans spread across Europe and the Middle East, leaving their mark on language, art and architecture. Personally, I would say that the end of the Norman age in England is when the cultural identity begins to be replaced with a new one. After Henry of Winchester surrenders his claim to the Duchy of Normandy, England undergoes a bit of an identity crisis. It's Henry's son, Edward Longshanks, who resolves that crisis by carving out a new identity, a distinctly English identity, appropriating the legends of King Arthur and making war on anyone who looks at him funny. The echoes of the Normans are still around today, but I would say that the Norman period ends with the invention of the English. Thanks for watching, farewell.